A few days ago, I took these things out onto Appleby Golf Club. These things being Jumbo Max Grips. The first time I've had a serious test, a playing test at least, out there in reality. And it's really interesting. I found a number of things that could quite possibly help me, but could also be a severe problem as well. So I bought these clubs indoors onto Trackman here at Chester and North Wales Academy. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a set of 245 irons from Mizuno with regular grips on, and I've got these 241 irons with the jumbo grips on in a five, seven, and a nine iron. And Trackman is gonna tell me whether or not this is a good or perhaps a bad thing for me to consider swapping from regular to jumbo max grips. So I'll make this nice and simple. I'm gonna start off with the nine iron, we're we'll hit and collect some balls with the jumbo grip on first, and then I'm gonna switch straight into the nine iron of the regular grip. So we've got a, uh, a fair old switch over. We're not all collecting data with one type of club. And first of all, first sort of practice swings of the morning, similar sort of thing, wrists seem, or it seems very hard to work the club face, which could prove to be very, very positive because I am a risky player, and it could well be that we hit the ball a little bit straighter, but only time will tell. First ball of the morning. That's the kind of shape, shot shape I would be expecting. 132 carry is, yeah, a really decent number. There's a nine iron, don't forget that I've got in hand. I found that I was perhaps on the course, I found I was perhaps just a little bit shorter. I didn't seem to generate the same amount of club head speed, that'll be interesting. And as I said, I also felt there was a slightly lower ball flight, particularly with the longer iron, not necessarily in the shorter end of the bag. So I'll carry on hitting some balls with this nine iron. Really good start with the jumbo grip, and then I'll switch up into the regular. A decent start. Yeah, not bad. Today's video was filmed at Chester and North Wales Golf Academy. really interesting and if you did watch Monday evening's video you'll know it was very noticeable on course and that's the minute you switch over from a jumbo grip into a regular size grip it is a really weird it's odd because you feel like all of a sudden one of the two becomes alien whichever way you're swapping from and to and the comment I made was that if you're going to go with jumbo grips I feel like you've got to go all in and that means you've got to have them on every club in the bag wedge through to driver and that's a serious consideration and a serious commitment and move away but i feel like unless you do that you're going to have like i said a very strange concept and being able to switch between the two uh, i think is is asking a lot not so much in the mechanics but certainly the mechanics but also the mentality because i feel like i'm 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 grabbing hold of a wafer thin straw at the moment with this nine iron in hand That one a little bit thin, gone down the middle, 126 carry. I'm looking realistically, spin number's good. Uh, where are we, a launch angle, yeah, all decent numbers with that first one with the regular iron. I'm not expecting to see any difference in performance between these two irons. There's a couple of years apart in terms of their so-called technology, but very, very similar uh, sets of irons indeed, and exactly the same shafting. So again, I'll carry on hitting. Number wise, looks to be where I'm expecting. 130, maybe a little bit longer than that with this iron, maybe touching 135, I would expect. Um, but it'd be interesting to see all those other attributes as well, and maybe more importantly, just how straight it continues to be or not. But at this stage, don't forget, we've only got a nine iron in hand. So you'd expect it to be reasonably straight. A solid strike again, yeah. Again, pulled down that left-hand side, which is something that I'm perhaps concerned about with the regular grips. And only with a short iron in hand, that's perhaps, like I said, you wouldn't want to be doing that 
with, uh, with a short iron, obviously, and we'll see how that pans out over a number of shots. All the other parameters are good, but there is an indication there that uh, there's already a pull left, and that could be because how wristy I am and where the jumbo grips might be a big help. Right, so I've collected data with the 7-iron and uh, we'll get to that very shortly, but nothing majorly interesting that I want to talk to you about at this point, but I do want to make a note about the 5-iron. I've started collecting data with the jumbo grip. This is where I feel I found the most uh, difference out on the golf course in that a flatter ball flight and also seem to lose a bit of distance and that seems to be something that I'm seeing indoors as well. Again, haven't moved into the regular grip yet, but a sort of a sort of 165, 170 max carry with a five iron in hand is probably shorter than I'd expect to be and I'll find out that uh, very shortly. But it's interesting for me is that, again, being the type of player I am, and I mean by that a, a lot of risks involves, it seems, in generating some club head speed, with the less loft, that seems to be impacting me even more so. So that's a real interesting one for me. That's a real nice strike. Um, 162 carry, like I said, that's the bit I'd be slightly worried about. Um, and launching 15.9 is, uh, is a little bit worrying with five iron for me. And what I'm seeing so far is, like I've said, pretty much exactly what I've seen out on the golf course. I will switch up into the regular five iron, see what happens. But yeah, there's, a, there's an element here where it's almost, you, you, there's a trade off to be made, it seems. It could well be that there's elements of the jumbo grips that are really positive for me. And there also could be some compromises. That's the way at least I'm seeing it so far. But this is of course purely a data-led experiment. I've seen them on course and I now need Trackman to confirm what I'm seeing. And uh, there's no hiding place with Trackman. This data tells it how it is and we will have numbers on five, seven and nine and on both of them. And I think that's where we'll, we'll go to next and see what is the difference and are there any benefits in fact of me switching up to these and perhaps you. Okay, really interesting test albeit a bit of a tiring one to be honest with you, it spread over a, a few hours to, to, to collect this data uh, to make sure everyone got a sort of fair crack of the whip. The first thing I want to address is the idea of dispersion. Um, out on the golf course, and you must watch that video that I posted on Monday evening, I suggested the ball flight was straight, but it's, it's hard to decide if my swing was half decent on the day and I was hitting the ball straight, or whether or not that was an impact of the jumbo grips. So first of all, here's a dispersion chart for an overall view of all the clubs. In my opinion, there's not one better than the other. So I think the dispersion element didn't really bear out as being a positive or a negative for either. It was really back down to my own sort of performance and swing attributes. The one noticeable difference across all irons, five, seven and nine, was that I hit the ball further with the regular grip. Now, that being said, I was also, and I'm just gonna check this as I run, certainly with the longer iron, maybe in the short iron a little bit quicker as well, my club head speed was slightly quicker. But as I said, it was more noticeable in the longer iron. And that's really important because in the longer iron, it's where we're failing to generate club head speed is where we're struggling to generate launch. And I think that's where the first big noticeable difference was and probably the biggest difference between the two uh, grips was in the five iron. And on average, my five iron carry with a regular grip was 175 yards with that red grip on. Uh, launch was 16.7 land angle of 40.7 that's what i'm going to concentrate on peak height of 79. if i then flip down to the jumbo grip we had a 159 carrier peak height of 68 a land angle of 38.7 and a launch angle of 16.6 which was pretty similar but fell down on other attributes and overall i mean it's 15 yards difference in terms of carry which is considerable and any elements of suggestion that these were straighter for me 
would be seriously negated by the fact that they were also considerably shorter. Now, I must admit, I didn't see that as much in the 7-iron. So 7-iron 145 carry, 7-iron uh, 158. So there was a big difference in the 7-iron as well in terms of carry distance. That is, again, considerable. Um, I think it was the 9-iron number then that must be. So 9-iron with the jumbo grip was an average carry of 124 and 9-iron where are we now there's a lot of numbers here right in front of me right now it was 132 so yes that carry distance did affect every single club and as i say just going back to that dispersion i didn't see a huge positive that it was helping me in any way everything i thought that i seen and felt in terms of on track man when the ball went left when the ball went right it was down to my swing and i didn't think the grip was impacting massively on it so for me my overall opinion is this Jumbo grips could be a real positive for some people, some golfers. And I think it's very difficult for you to analyze that without being able to try before you buy. That's what I think is a real problem for the manufacturers of jumbo grips because they're so difficult to try and test for yourselves. If you're a real wristy player, which I consider myself to be, but I certainly wasn't, uh, it wasn't helping me massively, then maybe, maybe there's some logic in this. I know there's also some health benefits in terms of the jumbo grip having positive impacts on the sort of, the people are, are suffering in terms of uh, certain injuries with their arms. So there are positives, but for me, nothing to suggest that I would swap into them. They've got their place, but certainly not for me. And I hope that test gives you some indication of, uh, well, my findings at least, I'm not sure whether it's a help or a hindrance to you, to be quite honest with you, because this is so specific and so much um, determined by what the individual swing is like and how you use your hands within that swing that I think is impossible to take any guidance off anybody else. So there you go. What I'm basically saying is an absolutely pointless and useless test, and the only benefit was to me personally in understanding that jumbo grips aren't for me, but they might be for you absolute nonsense right thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and can take some logic from it uh, more than i can i'll see you soon